prepare to read. Going places, genre study, fantasies are stories with made up events that cannot really happen. As you read Going Places, look for events that could not happen in real life, how pictures and words help you understand what happens, a lesson the main character learns, problems, conflicts, and solutions, resolutions, set a purpose. Ask questions before, during, and after you read to help you get information or understand the text. Look for evidence in the text and pictures to answer your questions. Power words. Assured. Exactly. Precise. Peered. Respond. Intent. Contraption. Replica. Assured. If you assured someone, you promised something would happen. The teacher assured us that the bus was on the way. Exactly. When things are exactly alike, they are the same in every way. My brother and I look exactly alike. Precise. Something that is precise is exact and correct. She gave us precise directions to the park. Peered. If you peered, you looked closely. Sophie and Diana peered into the microscope at the drop of pond water. Respond. When you respond, you answer in some way. I do not know how to respond to your question. Intent. Someone who is intent is set on doing something. The cat was intent on staring at the birds. Contraption. A contraption is an object that looks strange and hard to use. Jim built an amazing flying contraption. Replica. A replica is an exact copy of something. Each cookie was a replica of the other. Meet Paul A. Reynolds and Peter H. Reynolds. Peter and Paul Reynolds are twin brothers. They love to write and draw, and they work together on going places. They both worked on the story, and Peter also created the pictures. Peter likes to sit in cafes and draw because he likes to meet people and talk about his work. He hopes to inspire others to write and draw as well. Going Places by Peter and Paul Reynolds Illustrated by Peter Reynolds Raphael had been waiting all year long for the Going Places contest, a chance to build a go-kart, race it, and win. When the teacher announced, who would like the first kit, Raphael's hand shot up. The rest of the class watched enviously as Raphael walked back to his seat with the kit. Mrs. Chanda assured them, don't worry, you'll all be getting one and they're all exactly alike. The kit came with a set of precise instructions. That made Raphael happy. He was very good at following directions. Raphael hammered, glued, nailed, and assembled his kit. His go-kart looked just like the one in the directions. He was feeling quite proud. Raphael wondered how his classmate Maya was doing. She lived right next door. He peered over the fence. Hey, Maya, you haven't even started. Maya didn't respond. She was so intent on watching the bird in front of her and quickly sketching it that she didn't even notice Raphael. Then she just put down her pencil and stared at the bird dreamily. Raphael shrugged and let her be. The next morning, Raphael checked back in to see how Maya was doing. Wow, what is that? he asked. Maya grinned. You like it? Raphael responded slowly. Yeah, extremely cool. But, uh, Maya... 
there's just one little problem. That's not a go-card. Maya smiled. Who said it had to be a go-card? Raphael was confused. The set of instructions inside the box were for a go-card. But then again, they didn't say it had to be a go-card. He looked again at Maya's contraption. After a moment, he grinned. I get it. Hey, Maya, I really want to win this race. The instructions never said we couldn't team up either. And so they did, working late into the evening. The next day, everyone gathered for the big race. Each go-kart was a perfect replica of the other. Except one. One of the kids laughed. Looks like you had trouble with the going places instructions. You're going places, all right. You're going to lose. Maya and Raphael didn't even have time to respond because the announcer's big, boomy voice called out, Attention racers, start your engines. Four, three, two, one. A buzzer sounded, and they're off. While all the other go-karts disappeared in a cloud of dust, Maya just sat there in their motionless vehicle. Raphael shouted over the roar of engines and cheering crowds, Maya, what are we waiting for? No worries, Raphael, Maya answered. Flaps down, throttle up. And now they took off, off into the air. The other contestants looked up in amazement. Maya and Raphael hovered and then sped past them all. Before long, Maya and Raphael coasted across the finish line to the cheers of the waiting crowd. They kept rolling clear across the race grounds. Maya slammed the brakes, stopping just short of the lake at the edge of the school field. Raphael noticed a startled frog leap from a lily pad and dive into the water. He raised his eyebrow and looked at Maya. She smiled. Raphael, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Raphael just nodded. Turn and talk. Use details from going places to answer these questions with a partner. 1. Ask and answer questions. What questions did you ask yourself about the story before, during, and after reading? How did your questions help you understand the story? 2. Why do the kids laugh when they first see Raphael and Maya's vehicle? How do their feelings change after the race begins? 3. What do you think Raphael learns from this experience? Talking tip. Ask a question if you are not sure about your partner's ideas. Why did you say, 